I'm on theme. <laughs> Hello everybody, Nikki Mar here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. And as many of you may know, we have just entered probably my favorite month of the entire year. Yes friends, Halloween is 100% my element. I love all things pumpkin spice, festive and spooky. And so what better way to kick off this incredibly frightful month then with an entire ranking list dedicated to some of the most spooky characters that Disney has to offer. Whether they be from a Disney film, live action, or animation, from the Disney parks, or even from a Disney short. These characters are the definition of Halloween when it comes to Disney. The majority of them tend to shape a really big portion of the Disney company's month of October. And so today you and I are getting in the spooky season mood and we are going to talk about my 25 favorite Disney Halloween characters of all time. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator. I got my start over on TikTok, but have joined the YouTube community and have been absolutely loving making long form videos for you guys. So make sure to hit subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on any future magic from me. Because especially this month, you're not gonna wanna miss what I have coming up. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And believe me when I say, the spooky content has already started. <laughs> But as always, before we jump into today's video, I do have some brief disclaimers and conditions for our list today. But if you'd like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and I don't speak for the brand or the company. And so any and all opinions stated in this video are just my own and don't reflect those of the company. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney characters and Disney movies down in my comment section. The comments are really such a great place for you and I to connect and to get to share all of our favorite Disney things so make sure to leave all of your favorite Halloween characters below because my list is just my personal opinion So I would love to hear yours and thirdly for our disclaimers a big spoiler warning for all of the Disney characters and Disney movies that they come from in today's video as a big portion of today's ranking video is going to be talking about the plot of the Individual movies that these characters come from and so if you don't want anything spoiled for a specific character or the movie that they come from I would just recommend skipping on up to the next number on today's video, but next moving on to the conditions for today's list. This is a list that I have comprised of 25 characters that I believe shape the entirety of the month of October for the Walt Disney Company. They can be characters that come from popular Disney Halloween movies, whether that be an animated movie or a live action. It can be a character that the Disney parks utilizes around Halloween time, such as meet and greet characters in the parks or even for publicity for their Halloween parties. Or even from some of Disney's animated shorts, there are quite a few really, really good Halloween themed animated shorts. And so we are going to be sure to add some of those characters to today's list. And today's list is definitely going to look different from a lot of my other ranking videos that I've done, considering today's list probably has the most variety that I've had so far, with both animated characters, live action, and even Disney Parks characters. But we're combining all that spooky energy into one video, and so you're going to get it all in one place. <laughs> but with all of that said and done, I believe we are ready to jump into today's ranking video. Oh, and really quick, I did want to mention the brief talking points that we are going to touch on for each individual character. The first talking point we are going to touch on is where can this Disney character be found? Meaning do they come from a movie, from the parks, from an animated short? Secondly, we're going to be talking about the impact on their story. Thirdly, we are going to be talking about the character design because specifically surrounding a Halloween that is all about dressing up, we absolutely have to talk about the character's fashion sense. And for the fourth talking point, we are going to be talking about their impact on the Walt Disney Company, specifically surrounding the Halloween season. Some of these characters you may know and love and think they're some of the most popular and some of the other ones are more on the obscure side, but they actually might have a lot more to do with Halloween than the well-known ones. And so we can make sure to get through every single talking point, I am limiting today's list to 25 characters. Well, certain numbers have multiple characters, but I hope you'll understand why. <laughs> but with all that being said, sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, perhaps some witch's brew and candy corn, and let's get into my definitive ranking of Disney Halloween characters. We are starting off today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 25, who is Max Dennison. Now, Max Dennison is found in the popular Disney Halloween movie, Hocus Pocus. He is arguably the main character, the character that we follow throughout the entire plot of the film, so he is very impactful on this film. In his movie, he ends up lighting the black flame candle, which brings back three of the most infamous witches that Salem has ever known in history. He then must team up with some other 
characters who are going to appear on today's list <laughs> to defeat the three witches and to bring peace back to Salem. I love this film and this is absolutely not our last time talking about it on the list today. But as for his character design, Max is kind of a skeptic and a bummer when it comes to Halloween. We learn at the beginning of the movie that Max has just moved to Salem with his family from LA. And so a lot of his fashion sense for this movie is still stuck in his time in LA. He wears a lot of tie-dyes and snapback hats, which Hollywood dubbed an LA style back when this movie was made. <laughs> and a part of his personality is to be a bummer surrounding all of the joy and spookiness of Halloween. But I think it is safe to say that towards the end of the film, he ends up giving in and is liking it a little bit more. But as for his impact on the Halloween season for the Walt Disney Company, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is a relatively well-known character. He does not appear in any theme parks. However, I feel like a lot of people know who this character is specifically because Hocus Pocus is a seasonal movie that really becomes popular around Halloween. This is probably one of Disney's most popular Halloween movies, and so I feel like a lot of people would know the leading character. But why does he rank so low on my list? Well, it really is because of his downer attitude around Halloween. Max as a character is just not big into Halloween, and so that's why he's gonna rank on the lower end of today's list. I don't dislike his character at all. I think he's integral to this plot, and I really do think he has a really good character arc. But for a character who feels like he likes to distance himself from Halloween, I think that would end up leading him towards the bottom of today's list. But next we move on up to number 24 on my list, who is Allison. Now, not straying too far from the Hocus Pocus path, Allison can also be found from the Disney movie Hocus Pocus. It can definitely be argued that Allison is a secondary main character to Max. They end up meeting in school one day, and Max is very into Allison. He gives her his phone number, which she very slyly hands back to him. However, that night, going around trick-or-treating with his little sister, Max trick-or-treats at the house of Allison and invites her out to the museum, which used to be the old Sanderson house. And so Allison also finds herself swept up in the events of Hocus Pocus. As for her character design, she is very simple in design. However, what I will say is the fashion that she has at the beginning of her movie with her red cloak and even her Halloween costume really shows how into Halloween Allison is. She ends up in some other relatively simple autumn wear, which is honestly a pretty cute outfit and it works perfectly for the fall season. But yeah, much like Max, character design is relatively simple for her. And as for her impact on the Walt Disney Company, much like Max, she does not appear in any Disney parks and really only resurfaces around Halloween time when this movie becomes popular and everyone jumps on Disney Plus to rewatch it. But the reason why she ranks above Max is her Halloween spirit. Right from the very beginning, when Max is being a downer in Halloween in his class, Allison is the first to step up and to show him some Halloween spirit. And so we gotta give her credit where credit is due. Next, we're moving on up to number 23 on my list, and I promise after this one, I'll give you a little break from Hocus Pocus. <laughs> At number 23 is Danny Dennison. Now, Danny Dennison is the little sister of Max Dennison. Much like Max and his family, she has also made the move from LA to Salem. However, she is adapting to her new environment a little bit better than Max is. She has fully embraced Halloween, as you can see from her wearing her Halloween costume for pretty much the entire run of this film. <laughs> Danny is quite spirited and quite energetic, which leads to a lot of really funny moments in this film. Much like Max and Allison, she makes up the final portion of the main three that we follow throughout the plot of this film. And being the younger sister to the lead, Max, she often finds herself in a little bit of danger which Max has to save her from, mainly because he has that emotional pull towards her being family with her. As for her character design, Danny is wearing an adorable witch outfit as it is Halloween night. While her character design could be considered plain for being just a normal little girl, I really do like the witch costume that she wears. It has this sort of like red and black feel to it, and it's pretty cute. I really like the costume, and it definitely makes her stand out amongst the three leads. And as for impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, once again, it is simply for this movie just becoming popular around the Halloween season. You won't see her in any Disney parks, and she's hardly ever used in any promotional media. But next, we're going to move on up to number 22 on my list who is Gabby. Now, Gabby is a character from the new live-action Haunted Mansion movie. At the beginning of this film, Gabby has just moved into the Haunted Mansion with her son, Travis. She very quickly realizes that this is not a normal home, and therefore, very soon, she tries to enlist the help of some others to help break the curse on the mansion. In terms of the human characters in this movie, she is very easily a secondary lead, and so we get to see her throughout the events of this movie, and we pretty much follow along with her storyline. As for her character design, just being a regular mother, she does dress very 
normally. She typically wears an updo and will wear a dress around the house. Her outfit isn't too Halloween coded, but it definitely doesn't stand out as abnormal in this movie. And as for impact on the Walt Disney Company around the Halloween season, much like our Hocus Pocus friends, this movie typically becomes a little bit more popular to watch around the Halloween season, and so people will mostly know Gabby from just watching this film. She doesn't appear in any Disney parks. But regardless, I love her character. I think she is super funny, and she really does gain a lot of audience attention and sympathy, specifically surrounding the plot with her husband and her son. I'm gonna try not to spoil too much. Definitely recommend the Haunted Mansion movie. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 21 on my list. Again, not straying too far from the path of the Haunted Mansion, who is Ben Matias. Now, Ben Matias is the leading character of the new Haunted Mansion movie. He is a rocket scientist, and so he ends up inventing this camera that is able to take pictures of ghosts. After tragically losing his wife, he is enlisted by Gabby to come to the mansion in order to help her solve the mystery of the mansion. And of course, as you step over the threshold of the mansion, Ben finds himself swept up in the events of the plot of the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> what I love about this character so much is that you get comedy, but you also get those tender emotional moments from him. Him losing his wife is a big portion of this movie, and so we really get to emotionally feel for this character. As for his character design, again, relatively simple considering he is just a 21st century man. And so his outfit, much like Gabby's, is not super Halloween coded. And much like Gabby, his impact on the Walt Disney Company surrounding the Halloween season is for this movie, again, becoming popular around the season. And as we started off with three from Hocus Pocus, we are going to finish off the next three at number 20 with another Haunted Mansion character. At number 20 is Harriet. Now, Harriet is also a character from the Haunted Mansion movie. Harriet is a medium and is enlisted by Gabby and Ben to come to the mansion to lend her gifts of being able to connect with the spirit realm so that way our leading characters will be able to communicate with the dead in order to save the mansion. Now, Harriet is hysterical. I absolutely love this character. She's probably one of my favorites of the humans in this movie. Now Harriet does get introduced a little bit later than the other characters, but once she is in the film, you pretty much get to follow along with her storyline in the plot. And she also does have some very tender and emotional moments, along with all of her incredible comedic timing. Now as for Harriet's character design, Harriet, much like the others, is from the 21st century. However, she leans a little bit more into the stereotypical psychic medium look. She does like to come in with a lot more decadent wardrobe than some of the other humans in this movie. And honestly, I absolutely love her fashion. I feel like she is a almost modernized Madame Leota. You just can't help but love this character when she's introduced to the film. Oh my god, she is just iconic. <laughs> and as for her impact on the Walt Disney Company around the Halloween season, as you probably guessed, it is once again from this movie just becoming popular around the Halloween season. I promise not every character on today's list is going to have that reasoning. <laughs> ah, but next we move on up to number 19 on my list, who is Witch Hazel. I even love her name. I just think that's so funny. <laughs> now, Witch Hazel was originally seen in the 1952 short, Trick or Treat. In this short, Donald's three nephews are trick or treating, and when they arrive at his house to trick or treat for candy, Donald pulls some pranks on them and doesn't end up giving them candy. And Witch Hazel, who is flying by, sees what happens and ends up aiding the three in getting revenge on their uncle. What I love about Witch Hazel is that right off the front, she seems like a very stereotypical witch character. However, she is very kind and also very cunning too. She definitely sympathizes with those that deserve the sympathy and will go after anybody who is mean to others. And a really fun fact about this character is that she shares a voice with yet another iconic evil character. If you guys have seen my reused animation and audio in Disney movies video that I put out a few weeks ago, you will know that there is one iconic scream that is heard from both the Evil Queen and Maleficent. The scream was performed by actress Lucille Laverne, who was originally the voice of the Evil Queen, but her scream was reused for the demise of Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty. Well, if you happen to watch the 1952 short Trick or Treat, you will also hear this scream 
come from Witch Hazel. Now, Witch Hazel is not entirely voiced by Lucille Laverne, but her screams were archived footage from Snow White. Another detail that I just absolutely love that ties all of these iconic Disney ladies together. Now, as for Witch Hazel's character design, Witch Hazel has a very simple witch look. She has pretty much everything you could associate with a stereotypical witch, including the long nose, the pointed hat, as well as her broom. But she is such a wonderful character, and unfortunately for her impact on the Disney company, she doesn't get a whole lot. The only place you can see her in a Disney park is over in Disneyland in California, as in line for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, there is a fun little cameo to Witch Hazel on a little candy bar while you're waiting in line. But besides that, she doesn't have a really popular movie that resurfaces around Halloween time, and she's also not a meet and greet character in the parks, and so I feel like a lot of people don't know her, but she really is such a great character. The short Trick or Treat is honestly very short, and I highly recommend watching it around Halloween time. It is like such a great Halloween short. Next, moving on up to number 18 on my list are the Dancing Skeletons. Now, the Dancing Skeletons come from the 1929 animated short the Skeleton Dance. And fun fact about this short, it was actually released three days after Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Disney's first full-length animated feature. Now, The Skeleton Dance was actually an experimental short, which really helped animators to learn how to synchronize sound. If you end up watching this short, which again is also very short, you will notice that there is a lot of xylophone and a lot of bone noises, and all of it is very lined up with the animation that you're seeing on screen. And while the short itself is very simple in terms of plotline, it is just the skeletons wake up and they dance and then they go back in their tomb. <laughs> it is very iconic imagery for the Walt Disney Company. As for the character design, the dancing skeletons are dancing skeletons. <laughs> These dancing skeletons truly are bare bones in terms of character design. I'm so sorry, that was a horrible pun. <laughs> but as for their impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, I kind of like to think any little skeleton that shows up might be a little nod towards the dancing skeletons, as their animated short has a really big impact on the company in general. But as for specific character appearances or specific peaks and interests surrounding these characters, there really isn't a ton. Next, we move on up to number 17 on my list, who are the Lonesome Ghosts. Now, the Lonesome Ghosts come from an animated short called The Lonesome Ghosts, which was released in the year 1937. The four Lonesome Ghosts in this movie are kind of bored just hanging around their mansion, but one of them sees an advertisement in the newspaper for Ghost Hunters. They end up calling up the Ghost Hunters number to reveal that the Ghost Hunters are Mickey, Donald, and Goofy. Mickey, Donald, and Goofy end up arriving at the mansion and chasing around the ghosts, and eventually they are able to scare the ghosts away from the mansion, dressing up as ghosts. Well, dressing up. They get covered in some flour and other molasses and food. <laughs> this animated short is very cute, though. Definitely recommend checking it out. As for their character design, the Lonesome Ghosts are very similar to one another. They pretty much don't really have a ton of variation in design, although one of them is significantly shorter than the others. But they all seem like very basic ghosts, and they all have this sort of blue color. And as for their impact on the Walt Disney Company, once again, you don't see them too often, considering they only come from an animated short, but there is a nod to the Lonesome Ghosts, once again, over in line for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway in the Disneyland Park in California. Do I wish there was more? Absolutely. But next we move on up to number 16 on my list who is Katrina Van Tassel. Now, Katrina Van Tassel is from the iconic Disney movie, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Although she comes from this movie, she does only appear in the latter half of the movie, which is the Ichabod Crane segment, or The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Now, Katrina Van Tassel is one of the, I would say, three main characters in this movie, and she is definitely the love interest in this movie. She is the only female in the main love triangle. There are two gentlemen competing for her hand. What I love about Katrina is that she is so unbothered by all of the quarreling that is happening over who is going to end up marrying her. <laughs> she is very sweet and kind-natured in personality, although I would be lying if I said it doesn't seem like she does like to stir the pot from time to time. <laughs> as for her character design, she is relatively simple. She does wear very pretty gowns in this movie, as it is mentioned that her father is a very wealthy man within the town of Sleepy Hollow. And it's also interesting to point out that Katrina Von Tassel might remind you of some other iconic Disney ladies, as she does tend to bear a striking resemblance to Cinderella, Tinkerbell, and also the harp from Mickey and the Beanstalk. And as for impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, 
it is next to nothing as she does not appear as a meet and greet character and she really is not one of the main iconic characters from The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And I feel like a lot of people don't even really consider her a Halloween character, but seeing as she comes from a very spooky Disney movie, I'm definitely going to include her on today's list. Next, moving on up to number 15 on my list is Brom Bones. Now, Brom Bones is also from The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, however, only from the Ichabod segment. Brom is yet another third of the love triangle that takes place in this movie, and he is one of the two gentlemen competing for the hand of Katrina Von Tassel. Now, Brom is a very big and burly guy, and he very much resembles the character arc of Gaston in Beauty and the Beast. Brom is loud, boisterous, and he's not afraid to make himself known. And spoiler alert, he actually ends up winning the hand of Katrina Van Tassel. As for his character design, he is just very tall, very muscular, and wears some very simple clothing. Again, not too Halloween coded. But what I love about this character is his main iconic song from the film, as he sings about this iconic ghost that actually terrorizes a lot of other spirits. He sings about how he rides on horseback having lost his head. I don't want to go into too much detail considering we're going to be talking about this character a little bit later. <laughs> but yes, the major outlet of information about this mysterious ghost character is from Brom Bones. But I do have another point I want to talk about with Brom Bones. We'll get to that in a little bit. But as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween, again, not much, considering he very much, like Katrina, does fade into the background of this movie and isn't one of the more iconic characters that will show up in the Disney parks. Next, moving on up to number 14 on my list, is Thackeray Binks. Now, Thackeray Binks is from the iconic Disney movie Hocus Pocus, and the story of Thackeray begins all the way back in the 1600s when he is a young boy trying to save his sister from the Sanderson witches. He is transformed into a black cat that will live forever and ends up aiding our three main characters in the 20th century. I love Thackeray. I think he's a very cute cat character and also pretty iconic considering he is like the only Disney black cat character and obviously black cats are synonymous with Halloween time. Which brings us to his character design, he is a simple black cat. But in human form he is a young boy who wears colonial clothing. And once again considering he's an animal character he doesn't have the biggest impact on the Walt Disney Company, but seeing as he does aid our three main characters in the course of this film, I feel like a lot of people will end up knowing who he is. Next, moving on up to number 13 on my list. Ooh, I'm excited for this one. At number 13 is Chernabog. Now, Chernabog is from the Disney film Fantasia. And while you might be thinking Halloween character? I am gonna argue that this is perhaps one of the scariest pieces of animation that Disney has ever drawn, and Night on Bald Mountain is absolutely fantastic for any Halloween season. Chernabog is the leading character of his segment in Fantasia, and he is drawn to be this very big and imposing dark devil-esque character. He is actually the top of Bald Mountain as his character sits above and is part of the mountain, and he has these big giant wings that end up wrapping around him to form the top of the mountain. I talked about him quite a bit in my Ranking Disney Villains video, actually. I'll link that up above in case you're interested. What I love about him is he is so mysterious and so creepy in every single second and cell of his animation. But as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, well, he is actually a part of the Disney Villains float in Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. While he's not a face or a fur character, he is a big part of the float that you will see, where all of the main iconic Disney villains come out for some spooky fun. I love Chernabog. I really think he is iconic surrounding the Halloween season, and he's sure to give you a fright anytime you watch Fantasia. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 12 on my list, who is the Evil Queen. Now the Evil Queen, the first ever Disney villainess, comes from the iconic Disney movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Important to note that she has two main forms, her queenly look and also the old hag. Now the queen is of course the main villain in the first ever Disney movie, and the queen is pure evil. She is jealous beyond belief of Snow White's beauty, and for that reason and that reason alone, she wants her gone. As for her character design, she has her queen look, which is this iconic, beautiful purple dress with long black cape and a stunning crown upon her head. But then we also get to the creepy old hag look, where she has cast a spell on herself so she will be all bent and misshapen, and she wears this really shapeless black outfit, and it's 
just so creepy, but so beautiful and iconic at the same time. But as for impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, because once again, not the most Halloween coded character, but she is not only in Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party as a character that you can walk by and greet over in the Princess Fairy Tale Hall candy line, but she is also a part of Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade. She, I will say, is one of two iconic Disney villainesses that is heavily promoted around the Halloween season. But with that being said, let's move on up to number 11 on my list. Who is Maleficent? Now, Maleficent can be found in the Disney animated movie Sleeping Beauty, and she is the main antagonist of the film. Maleficent is an evil fairy who places a curse upon Aurora when she is very little. Eventually, in her final battle, she transforms herself into a huge fire-breathing dragon, but is vanquished by Prince Philip, who saves the day and Princess Aurora. Now, Maleficent probably has one of the most iconic character designs of all of the Disney villains. She is super tall and statuesque, and has two horns atop her head. She also carries a large staff and has a pet raven named Diablo, and she has these long black robes that touch the floor, and she is just so evil and iconic, and I absolutely love her as a Disney character. Now what is her impact on the Walt Disney Company surrounding Halloween? Well she, much like our friend the Evil Queen, is also a walk-by meet and greet character in the line for Princess Fairy Tale Hall, and she is also the main featured villain atop the Disney Villains float in Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade. Very recently Disney has brought Maleficent to the forefront knowing that she is an iconic Halloween character, and they are making her very readily available to all of those who attend the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. But with that friend, we have reached number 10 and the top 10 of my favorite Disney Halloween characters. If you have any idea who's going to make it into the top 10, make sure to leave it down in the comments down below. I can't wait to see all of your guesses as to who's going to make it. But with that, we're going to start off my top 10 at number 10, who is Billy Butcherson. Now, Billy Butcherson is also from the iconic Disney film Hocus Pocus, and he is the undead zombie character who the three witches bring back to life during the course of the film. Now, it is learned through the legend of the sisters that Billy Butcherson actually dated one of them, but he ended up cheating on her with another sister. So it is safe to say that in life, Billy Butcherson is not necessarily one to look up to, but in the afterlife, he is absolutely adorable and I love this character. For the majority of the film, Billy doesn't speak as his mouth has been sewn shut, but luckily for us he ends up being able to cut the thread and he is able to speak for the remainder of the film. I think Billy is so cute, he's so funny, and the gag of him constantly losing his head is just incredible. As for his character design, he is just a relatively simple zombie character, but as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, while you can't quite meet him in the parks, he is available on some merchandise, which is super fun, and he also has one of those iconic moments in his movie that constantly comes back up every Halloween when Hocus Pocus is being more heavily watched. Next, moving on up to number 9 on my list is the Hatbox Ghost. Now, the Hatbox Ghost can be found in the Disney movie The Haunted Mansion, and he can also be found on the ride The Haunted Mansion. We find out throughout the course of the movie The Haunted Mansion that the Hatbox Ghost is actually the main antagonist, and he is the one trying to trap all of the spirits inside of the home. And I will leave it up to you to find out whether or not, at the end, he is vanquished or not. As for his character design, the Hatbox Ghost is perhaps one of the most iconic ghosts in the mansion, as he was actually originally intended to be an opening day figure. He was operational for the first few days of the ride, however the main magical effect surrounding this character is that his face would disappear off of his shoulders and appear in a little hat box that he would be carrying. A few days after the ride opened, the Imagineers saw that he wasn't operating the way they wanted him to, and so he disappeared out of the mansion for over 50 years. And he was only returned to the mansion very recently for Disneyland's 50th anniversary and a few years ago in the Magic Kingdom in Disney World. But he wears a long black cloak, he carries a hat box, and he wears a top hat upon his head. Something kind of like this. Hmm. And as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company, he can be seen every single day in the Haunted Mansion ride, and while we are yet to have a meet and greet character, my hopes are high as this is one of Disney's most iconic characters, and I'm really hoping that he is brought to life in meet and greet form. And the day that's announced, believe me, I will already be in line. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 8 on my list. 
who is Madame Leota. Now, Madame Leota also comes from the new Disney Haunted Mansion movie, but she, much like the Hatbox Ghost, can also be found in the Haunted Mansion ride. Now, in the movie, Madame Leota is one of the core spirits that is brought forth by Harriet to help our human friends stop the Hatbox Ghost. And I actually talked quite a bit more about Madame Leota over in my Ranking Disney Parks characters video, which I can link above for you as well. As for her character design, Madame Leota is the iconic head in the crystal ball that you see floating around. Her face in the Haunted Mansion is modeled after Imagineer Leota Tombs, however in the Disney movie she was played by Jamie Lee Curtis. As for her impact on the Walt Disney Company in Halloween, well, she can be found every single day in the Haunted Mansion, but her tombstone is actually one of the floats over in Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. You'll see on top of one of the moving floats that there is the Madame Leota tombstone that you can also see in the outdoor portion of the queue for the ride. I absolutely love this character, and she is just one of my favorites surrounding the spooky season. But with that, we're moving on up to number seven on my list who is Sally. Now, Sally is the secondary main character in the Tim Burton film, The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I can't believe I've been posting on my channel for this long and still haven't talked about The Nightmare Before Christmas. I love this film. Now, in her film, Sally is the creation of the doctor. She often has to do his bidding and follow his word, but she is very rebellious in nature and tends to escape his dwelling. She does have a very big crush on another character that we're going to be talking about very soon on this list, and she often does everything she can to help him get along in life. She sees his dreams, and even though they do worry her quite a bit, she's willing to do whatever she needs to do to help him achieve them. As for her character design, Sally is very much a ragdoll type character. She is sewn up all over her body, and she is able to pick certain threads to make certain limbs fall off of her body, <laughs> and I absolutely love her patchwork dress and red yarn-esque hair. And as for impact on the wall, Disney Company around Halloween time, she is in fact a meet and greet character at the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I think this is such a wonderful addition to the Halloween season, considering she is just absolutely iconic in nature, and I love her character design, and also her relationship with... we'll get to that soon. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number six on my list is Ichabod Crane. Now, Ichabod Crane can be found in the Disney film The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, and he is, of course, in the second half of the film during the Sleepy Hollow segment. Now, Ichabod Crane is the school teacher that comes to Sleepy Hollow, and everyone in town finds him very odd and interesting. He ends up being the third member of the love triangle with Brom Bones and Katrina Von Tassel, and while it definitely seems like he is winning over the hand of fair Katrina, he does end up not winning her hand in the end, seeing as something pretty spooky happens to him. On the night of the big Von Tassel party, Brom Bones tells the ghost story about a certain ghost that we have yet to talk about, and Ichabod ends up taking a potentially fatal journey through the forest, where he actually comes face to face with this horseback riding ghost. While it seems as though he is just able to escape, and rumors have also come up that he was able to escape to a neighboring city, many believe that he actually did perish on this evening that he came face to face with the ghost. There is so much lore and speculation surrounding Ichabod Crane, and it's one of the many reasons why he is one of the most beloved Disney Halloween characters. As for his character design, he is very tall and lanky, he has a very pointed nose, and he wears very colonial style clothing. And as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company surrounding Halloween, well, while there used to only be one tiny reference in the Magic Kingdom surrounding Ichabod, which was the Sleepy Hollow refreshment stand, his shadow can now be seen above ye old Christmas shop in Liberty Square. And also, I don't know who was going to tell me this, Apparently, at Oogie Boogie Bash, he is apparently a leading character for the parade, along with the ghost in his movie. How did I not know that Ichabod Crane was a face character? That is so cool, and I need to get over to California to see that immediately. <laughs> but with that, we've reached number five on my list. At number five is the Headless Horseman. Now, the Headless Horseman is, of course, from the Disney film The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, and while he has very little screen time, he is talked about quite a bit in this movie. The Headless Horseman is, of course, the horseback riding ghost that we have been discussing for the entirety of this video. He is the evil spirit that Brom Bones tells the story about at the Von Tassel party, and he is also the ghost that Ichabod comes face to face with in the forest. The Headless Horseman is a Hessian soldier who ended up losing his head. He now travels through the forest looking for one to replace his own. Ooh, so creepy. But what's really cool about him is that for the meantime, he carries a lit jack-o'-lantern in his hand 
to serve as his head. Now, remember how I mentioned that there was something I want to tell you about Brom Bones? Well, many who have watched this film actually believe that Brom was trying to scare Ichabod intentionally, even to the point of dressing up as the headless horseman to scare Ichabod away so that he wouldn't end up with Katrina. It is never confirmed whether or not Brahm is actually the Headless Horseman in the film, but I have my speculations, and I'm very curious as to all of your thoughts. If you happen to rewatch this film, let me know down in the comments, do you think Brahm is the Headless Horseman? He definitely seems like a mean enough character to want to dress up to the point of being able to scare Ichabod away. But as for the impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, the Headless Horseman in fact leads Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade Parade, as he atop of his black stallion can be seen riding down Main Street. And this is such a sight to behold. I absolutely love that Disney has incorporated him into the parade. So iconic, so spooky, absolutely love this character to pieces. But with that, we move on up to number four on my list, who is Jack Skellington. Now, Jack Skellington is, of course, from the iconic Disney and Tim Burton film, the Nightmare Before Christmas. He is the leading character of this film, and while he is indeed the Pumpkin King, in the course of his film, he actually finds himself very intrigued by Christmas time. He tries to bring Christmas to Halloween Town, and while it doesn't quite go the way he wants it to, he does end up being able to give Halloween Town an experience that they probably never would have had. I think his relationship with Sally is very, very sweet, and I really think they make a really great couple. As for his character design, Jack is a very tall and skinny skeleton character, and he wears a striped suit, which is black and white stripes, and I absolutely love his design. When you think of Disney Halloween iconography, I definitely think Jack Skellington definitely comes to the forefront of your brain. He is spooky, but also has really great character development in his movie, and yeah, I just absolutely love him. And as for his impact on the Walt Disney Company around Halloween time, he is in fact a meet and greet character character during Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, as he actually meets and greets with Sally. Love this character so much. I had so much fun dressing up as him a couple of years ago. I'll leave a little picture up here. But yeah, if you aren't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram because I have a lot of spooky content coming very soon. <laughs> ah, but with that, my friends, we have reached number three on my list, and I think you can all tell where this is going from here. Yes, I think it is safe to say right here and right now that number three, number two, and number one on today's list are the Sanderson sisters, Winifred, Mary, and Sarah Sanderson. Now, in what order do these ladies actually fall? Well, let's go through it. At number three on my list is Mary Sanderson. Now, Mary Sanderson is one of the three Sanderson sisters who we follow throughout the course of the movie, Hocus Pocus. And she has the witchy ability to be able to smell when a child is near. She's definitely one of the more bumbling characters of the three witches. But regardless, I think she is very funny as a character, and I think a lot of audience members will attach themselves onto her. Between the three witches, she wears a reddish witchy outfit and has dark hair. Next, we're going to move on out to number two on my list, who is Sarah Sanderson. Now, Sarah Sanderson is also one of the three Sanderson sisters, of course. And her witchy ability is that she is able to sing to children in order to lure them in and hypnotize them. The Sanderson sisters are often trying to steal the lives of children so that way they may live forever, and Sarah's ability is one of the main reasons why they are able to do that. Sarah's character design has a very purple dress. She is the youngest of the three, and she has very long blonde hair. And she's also a little bit boy crazy, which adds for a little bit more fun in the film. <laughs> but next we have reached number one on my list, who is Winifred Sanderson. This iconic witch could not have been placed anywhere else on my list but number one. Now, Winifred is the leader of the Sanderson sisters. She is the eldest and also the most level-headed out of all of them. She is always the one with the plan and always the one to make sure those plans go accordingly. She is the owner of the book in this movie. The book, of course, has a lot of her most evil spells. And Winifred is very talented in terms of being able to use magic. She is able to create potions, of course, but also is able to conjure magic from her fingertips. As for her character design, she has gorgeous curly red hair on top of her head, and also long green intricate robes. Now why do these sisters rank in this order? Well, 
Mary unfortunately doesn't have a song in her movie and therefore I feel like she sort of fades into the background a little bit when it comes to the other two. But I really do love her and I wish she had gotten a song in her original movie considering her actress, Kathy Najimy, is actually a very talented vocalist. Sarah Sanderson lands herself in second position because I think she is such a wonderful character. She gets herself and her sisters into a lot of trouble, but she also has a very short but very beautiful song. And I really love Sarah Jessica Parker's portrayal of this character. I think she really made her super individualistic amongst the three. And finally, at number one, Winifred definitely ranks at number one because Bette Midler's performance of this character is, in my opinion, her most iconic film role to this date. There is truly nobody more perfect for the role than Bette Midler, and her song I Put a Spell on You and also her iconic witchy look is just absolutely quintessential to the Disney Halloween season. And as for their impact on the Walt Disney Company surrounding Halloween, well, over in the Magic Kingdom for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, there is actually a stage show right in front of Cinderella's castle that is led by the three Sanderson sisters. They are trying to create their Hocus Pocus Party Potion and end up needing the help of some frightful friends calling forth all of the Disney villains onto the Cinderella Castle stage. This is probably one of the highlights highlights for me of the Halloween party and I absolutely love getting to see the three sisters come to life within the Disney parks. I can only hope that in the coming years that they eventually become meet and greet characters. I love these three witches, they are absolutely some of my most favorite Disney live action characters of all time, as their movie Hocus Pocus is one of my favorites in the live action ranking that I did, which I will also leave up above. But yes, nobody could have finished this list off better than the Sanderson sisters, they know how to have a party. Whew. And with that, friends, we have talked about 25 of my favorite Disney Halloween characters. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I had so much fun talking about all of these incredible Halloween characters. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And you're definitely going to want to subscribe because I have some more super fun videos coming out for the Halloween season. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And at this point, I have long-form videos coming out on YouTube every single Friday at 5 p.m., which for the month of Halloween will all be Halloween-themed. And definitely make sure to stick around because in less than two weeks, I will be attending Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, and I will have a full vlog of the night up on my channel. I am going all out with my Halloween costume this year, dressing up not only for the Halloween party, but also when I'm back at home. And as yet another hint for my costume, the character was included on today's list. I am really narrowing it down for you and I really hope you guys are able to guess it before I do an official announcement of what my costume will be this year. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun. But with that, my friends, stay spooky. And until next time, I'll see you all real soon.